Hi guys, good evening. Thank you for joining the live stream. And have you all uh, had a chance to check out today's episode of Beer Biceps with Rajeshin Nandi as of yet? I have almost finished it already. I was watching it right before starting the live stream as well. Uh, I've watched about 50, 55 minutes of it. It's fascinating, and I'm really excited about it because uh, those who have uh, those who joined our uh, last night's live stream and the previous one as well, especially last night's because. the first uh, about 15 20 minutes whatever uh, rajeshinandi discussed not 15 20 minutes i think about 15 minutes yeah we uh, discussed a uh, similar things yesterday because he starts off the first about 10 12 minutes uh, talking about sri aurobindo saying that how much sri aurobindo's book the life divine helped him in understanding tantra even which is exactly what i was saying yesterday while discussing uh, shakti and shakta shakti and shakta because uh the topic was pretty dense yesterday the language had to be tough because we are first of all things that are uh, the the co essences experiences of hinduism they are tough to articulate in language anyway some of them are just unexplainable realities to quote sri aurobindo himself and then we are using a foreign language to describe uh, distinctly indian hindu uh, thoughts experiences uh, epistemologies so the language is going to get dense anyway so while reading that i was repeatedly saying that thank god i have read at least a bit of sri aurobindo i have read about 150 200 pages of that 1100 page book and um, i of course i have i've had to read most of the parts multiple times like for example the first two pages first one and a half pages i read about six times before i understood it but anyway uh, my introduction to any book relating to hinduism started with life divine itself so that's why my base was kind of clear so i could grasp uh, many other things very easily not not very easily but uh, relatively easily and even shakti and shakta the things we were discussing yesterday uh, that was pretty easy for I, i at the end of the day i could grasp it because i had read life divine uh, and i think i've now decided that we will have to do live streams on life divine as well because it's turning out to be an extremely important book and today rajeshinandi even basically overtly endorsed it saying that yes that book is very important and then rajeshinandi discussed arthur avalon the author of the book we are discussing today and said exact those st- stories which i discussed yesterday and even every day in at the start of our live streams whenever we are discussing his books which is that he was a calcutta high court judge in the british era and one day he was uh, listening to a case he was feeling distracted and then someone uh, he sends a guard wo beada bolte hain hum bengali mein वो बाहर जाता है एंड द जज सेंड हिम आउटसाइड टू फाइंड आउट दैट व्हाट्स गोइंग ऑन सी इफ समथिंग इज गोइंग ऑन सम कमोशन इज गोइंग आउटसाइड गोइंग ऑन आउटसाइड व्हाई एम आई नॉट नॉट बीइंग एबल टू नॉट बीइंग एबल टू कंसंट्रेट ऑन माय केस हियर एंड देन द गार्ड सीज दैट वन साधु और और सन्यासी इज डूइंग सम यज्ञ आउटसाइड द कोर्ट एंड ही अरेस्ट हिम एंड एंड ब्रिंग्स इन फ्रंट ऑफ द जज एंड द जज सेज दैट व्हाट वर यू डूइंग ही सेज दैट आई वाज डूइंग uh tantra uh, sadhana or puja uh, to to distract you specifically that's when he gets interested in tantra and um, uh, he he comes under the uh, guidance of a guru and uh, totally becomes a uh, tantra upasak and another story which today uh, rajeshinandi said which i forgot to mention all these days is that uh, his guru had told him that your sanskrit pronunciation has to be absolutely perfect and for that you will actually have to not uh, sleep on normal beds and pillows and mattresses even you'll have to sit on the flo- you'll, you'll have to sleep on floors you'll have to lie down on floors because when sanskrit or these texts were being written people used to lie down on floors without any comfort and that of course affected their anatomy in a particular way and your anatomy will definitely affect the way you breathe the aff- will affect the way you pronounce things everything so in order for your sanskrit uh, pronunciation to be authentic and or match up to the uh, times of when these texts were being written you will have to sleep on uh, just floor not on pillows and mattresses that's also the story that rajeshinandi specified today okay uh, let me check some comments now 
Uh, Draupadi didn't marry all five Pandavas. I checked Bodhi Critical Edition, and its second chapter says Draupadi marries all five Pandavas. Uh, okay, but the one that Samiksha showed otherwise, but I lack knowledge. It seems I'll look into it. Namaskar, boy. Jai Shri Ram, Dada. Jai Shri Ram. Hello. Uh, that's written here. It's translated by Vivek Debroy, page thirty-five, thirty-six. Uh, I see. If there, okay. So now we start introduction to Tantra Shastra, and uh, today we will basically finish the book because uh, only about forty pages are left. So it's it's nice to finish an entire book in just three live streams. It was a very very brief gist of Tantra Shastra. Someday we will start the principles of Tantra also to get into uh, the scholarly approach, whatever we can take in understanding Tantra. And um, this was basically uh, Sir, Sir John Woodruff's first book. And so in the beginning, in the first days live stream, especially in the first uh, five six pages, his writing was pretty clunky. The sentence construction was pretty weird. uh the sentence arrangements were pretty weird so whoever started listening to our live stream on the first day had pretty had a pretty tough time in the first 1 hour i think but then it got smoother as as we went on with it oh. so we were in the middle of the chapter called worship hello so we d- we discussed different kinds of worship and now we specifically start the way of worship called panchatatva we discussed puja uh let's see what what all we d- did we discuss puja nyasa all the all the steps and uh, different kinds of pujas uh wo- worship purascharana bhuta shuddhi etc now we start panchatatva so there are as already stated three classes of men pashu veera and divya the operation of the gunas which produce these types affect the operation of the gunas which produce these types affect on the gross material plane the animal tendencies manifesting in the three chief physical functions eating and drinking whereby the annamaya kosha is maintained and sexual intercourse for those of you who uh, saw our, our our first days live stream with uh, with this book annamaya kosha is one of the sheets of your existence uh, there are different koshas uh, and dif- uh, which is your existence in different realms or, or the in 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 layman's white liberal terms we call we could call it uh, that aura thing mm. eating and drinking annamaya kosha is maintained by eating and drinking and sexual intercourse by which it is reproduced so the operation of the gunas which produce these types affect on the gross material plane the animal tendencies manifesting in the three chief physical functions eating and drinking whereby the annamaya kosha is maintained and sexual intercourse by which it is reproduced these functions are the subject of the panchatatva or panchamakar five m's as they are vulgarly called vis-a-vis madhya wine mamsa meat uh, matsya fish mudra parched grain and maithuna coition uh, sex In ordinary parlance mudra means ritual gestures or positions of the body in worship and hatha yoga but as one of the five elements it is parched cereal and is defined as uh bhrishta bhrishta danya dikam it's mentioned in uh, yogini tantra uh, bhrishta danya dikam bhrishta danya dikam uh okay it's a it's a long quote let's see bhrishta danya dikam yad yad चव्यन्यम प्रचकस्ते स मुद्रा कथित देवी सर्वेसम नागनंदिनी द तंत्र स्पीक ऑफ द फाइव एलिमेंट्स एज पंचतत्व कूल द्रव्य कूल तत्व एंड सर्टन ऑफ द एलिमेंट्स हैव एसोटेरिक नेम सच एज कारणावारी कारणावारी और तीर्थवारी फॉर वाइन द फिफ्थ एलिमेंट बीइंग यूजुअली कॉल्ड लता साधना साधना दैट इज साधना विथ वुमेन और शक्ति the five elements moreover have various meanings according as they uh, form part of the tamasika or uh, parshvachara and rajasika which is virachara or divya or satvika sadhanas respectively uh why are mamsa and matsya different both are meat only <laughs> Th- that's the same same uh, issue with eggs being considered vegetarian in some countries whereas being not considered non vegetarian in some countries uh, because 
uh, how you look at it how common that that particular animal or that particular food is to you that's how you define things for example in greece uh, even a salad basically veg salad involves some eggs and chicken as well all the elements or their substitutes are purified and consecrated and then with the appropriate ritual the first four are consumed such consumption being followed by lata sadhana or its symbolic equivalent the tantra prohibits indiscriminate use of the elements which may be consumed or employed only after purification or shodhana and during worship according to the tantric ritual then also all excess excess meaning useless uh, uh, luxurious uses are forbidden the syama rahasya says that intemperance leads to hell and this tantra and this tantra conse- condemns it in chapter 5 a well known saying in tantra describes the true hero or veera to be not he who is of great physical strength and prowess the great eater and drinker or man of powerful sexual energy but he who has controlled his senses or and is a truth seeker ever engaged in worship and who has sacrificed lust and all other passions jitendriya satyavadi nityanushtha nitya nityanushthana tatpara kamadi balidanascha sa veera sa veera iti giyate giyate the elements in their literal sense are not available in sadhana for all the nature of the pashu requires strict adherence to vedic rule in the matter of these physical functions even in worship this rule prohibits the drinking of wine a substance subject to the three curses of brahma kacha and krishna in the following terms madhyam apeyam adeyam agrahyam that is wine must not be drunk given or taken the drinking of wine in ordinary life or for satisfaction of the sensual appetite is in fact a sin involving prashtitta and entailing according to the vishnu purana punishment in the same hell as that to which a killer of a brahmana goes as regards flesh and fish the higher castes outside bengal who submit to the orthodox smarta discipline eat neither nor do a high and strict brahmanas even in that province meaning bengal but the bulk of the people there both men and women eat fish and men consume the flesh of male goats which have been previously offered to the deity the vedika dharma is equally strict upon the subject of sexual intercourse mathun other than with the householder's own wife is condemned and this is not only in its literal sense but in that which is known as ashtanga mathuna visavi smaranam thinking up upon it krittanam talking of it meaning talking of uh, sex with other people other than your wife keli playing with women prekshanam looking upon women guhya bhashanam talking in private with women sankalpa wish or resolve for mathuna uh, adhyavasaya adhyavasa uh, bengali determination towards it kriya nishpati uh, actual accomplishment of the sexual act all these in short the pashu and except for ritual purposes those who are not pashus they should in the words of the shakta uh, kram shakta shakta kramiya avoid mathuna conversation on the subject and assemblies of women mathunam tat kathalapam tat tat kathalapam tad goshtim parivarjayet even in the case of the householder's own wife marital consistency marital continency is enjoyed the div- the divinity in woman which the tantra in particular proclaims is also recognized in the ordinary vedic teaching as must obviously be the case given the common foundation upon which all the shastras rest woman is not to be regarded merely as an object of enjoyment but as a house goddess griha devta according to the sublime notions of shruti the union of man and wife is a veritable sacrificial rite a sacrificial a, a sacrifice in fire homa where she is both hearth kunda and flame and he who knows this as homa attains liberation similarly the tantrika mat- mantra for shiva shakti yoga runs quote this is the eternal homa in which by the path of shushumna sacrifice is made of the functions of sense to the spirit as fire kindled with the ghee of merit and demerit taken from the mind as the ghee pot swaha it is not only thus that wife and husband are associated 
for the vedika dharma is in in this now neglected prescribes that the householder should worship in company with his wife brahmacharya or uh, brahmacharya or continency is not as is sometimes supposed a requisite of the student asana uh, uh, ashrama only but is a rule which governs the married householder grihastha also interesting according to vedika injun- injunctions union of man and wife must take place once a month on the 5th day after the cessation of the menses and then only hence it is that the nitya tantra when giving the characteristic of a pashu says that he is he is one who avoids sexual union except on the 5th day ritukalam vina devi uh, ramanam parivrajayet in other words the pashu is he who in this case as in other matters follows for all purposes ritual or the otherwise the vedic injunctions which govern the ordinary life of all the above mentioned rules govern the life of all men the only exception which the tantra makes is for purpose of sadhana in the case of those who are competent or adhikari for virachara virachara it is held indeed that the exception is not strictly an exception to vedic teaching at all and that it is an error to suppose that the tantrika rahasya puja is opposed to the vedas hmm. it is an error to consider that to suppose that thus whilst vedic rule prohibits the use of wine in ordinary life and for purposes of mere sensual gratification it pres- it prescribes the religious yagya with wine this ritual use the tantra also allows provided that the sadhaka is competent for the sadhana in which its consumption is part of its ritual and method the tantra enforces the vedic rule in the cases uh, ritual or other, otherwise for those who are governed by the vedic achara the nitya tantra says they quote they pashu uh, meaning pashus should never worship the devi during the latter part of the day in the evening or at night ratru naiva yajet devim samdhyayam va paranhake because all such worship uh, connotes maithuna prohibited to the pashu in lieu of it varying substitutes are prescribed such as either an offering of flowers with the hands formed into the kachapa mudra or union with the worshipper's own wife in the same way in lieu of wine the pashu should uh, take milk if a brahmana if the pashu is a brahmana he should take milk if it's a kshatriya he should take ghee if it's a vaishya he should take honey and if it's a shudra a liquor made from rice which is in bengali probably bhater fan i don't know what it's called uh, uh in in non bengali salt ginger sesamum wheat uh, mashakalai or beans and garlic are various substitutes for meat and the white brinjal vegetable red radish masoor a kind of gram red sesamum and pani phala an aquatic plant take the place of fish paddy rice wheat and gram generally are mudra the veera or or rather he who is qualified adhikari for virachara since the true veera is its finished product that veera commences sadhana with the rajasika uh, pana tatva first stated which are employed for the destruction of the sensual tendencies which they connote for the worship of shakti the panchatatvas are declared to be essential this tantra declares that such worship without their use is but the practice of evil magic okay this tantra declares that such worship without their use without the use of panchatatvas is but practice of evil magic hmm upon this passage the commentator jaganmohan tarkalankar tarkalankara observes as follows quote let us consider what most contributes to the fall of a man making him forget duty sink into sin and die an earthly death first among these are wine and women fish meat and mudra and accessories by these things men have lost their manhood shiva then desires to employ these very poisons in order to eradicate the poison in the human system poison is the antidote for poison this is the right treatment for those who long for drink or lust for women the physician must however be an experienced one if there be a mistake as to the application the patient is likely to die shiva has said that the way of kulachara 
is as difficult as it is to walk on the edge of a sword or to hold a wild tiger. There is a secret argument in favor of the Panchatattva, and those tattvas so understood should be followed by all. None, however, but the initiate, meaning jiska diksha hua hai, the dikshit. None, however, except the dikshit can grasp this argument and therefore Shiva has directed that it should not be revealed before anybody and everybody. Um, an initiate, when he sees a woman, will worship her as his own mother or goddess, Ishta Devta, and bow before her. The Vishnu Puran says that by feeding your desires, you cannot satisfy them. Yes, this is one of the most beautiful lines I had read even while discussing our live streams on uh, Manusmriti as well. I remember reading this line in Manusmriti that just because you uh, feed your desires, that doesn't mean you ended, you satisfied your desires. If you keep feeding your desires, the desire keeps increasing. It is like pouring ghee on fire, yes. Though this is true, an experienced spiritual teacher, Guru, will know how by the application of this poisonous medicine to kill the poison of samsara. Shiva has, however, prohibited the indiscriminate publication of this. The meaning of this passage would therefore appear to be this. That is, the object of Tantrika worship is Brahma Sa Sayuja, Brahma Sayujya, or union with the Brahman. If that is not attained, nothing is attained. And with men's propensities as they are, this can only be attained through the special treatment prescribed by the Tantras. If this is not followed, then the sensual propensities are not eradicated, and the work for the desired end of Tantra is as useless as magic, which, worked by such a man, leads only to the injury of others. The other secret argument here referred to is that is that by which it is shown that the particular may be raised to the universal life by the vehicle of those same passions which when flowing only in an outward and downward current are the most powerful bonds to bind him to the former. The passage cited refers to the necessity for the spiritual direction of the Guru. To the want of, to the lack of such is accredited the abuses of the system. Okay. When there is a lack of these things, lack of uh, Guru Shisha Parampara as well, then the abuses of the system start happening. When the patient or Shishya and the disease are working together, there is poor hope for the former. But when the patient, the disease and the physician, that is the Guru are on one and that the wrong side, then, um, uh, then, then nothing can save him from a decent on that downward path which, which it is the object of the sadhana to prevent. This, this sentence was pretty dark. L listen to this. When the patient or shishya and the disease are working together, there is poor hope for the former. That is the shishya. But when the patient, the disease and the physician are, are on one and that wrong side, then nothing can save him from a descent on that downward path which it is the object of the sadhana to prevent. Verse 67 in chapter 1 of Mahanirvana Tantra is here on point. Owing, however, to abuses, particularly as regards the tattva of Madhya and Maithuna, this tantra, according to the current version, prescribes in certain cases limitations as regards their use. It prescribes that when the Kali Yuga is in full strength and in the case of householders, Grihastha, whose minds are engrossed with worldly affairs, the three sweets, the Madhuratraya, are to be substituted for wine. Those who are virtuous of temperament and whose minds are turned towards the Brahman are permitted to take five cups of wine. So also as regards Maithuna, this tantra states that men in this Kali age are by their nature weak and disturbed by lust, and by reason of this do not recognize women or Shakti to be the image of the deity. It therefore accordingly ordains that when the Kali Yuga is in full sway, the fifth tattva shall only be accomplished with Sphere Shakti, or the worship, uh, worshipper's own wife, and that union with a woman who is not married to the sadhaka in either Brahma uh, or Shaiva forms is forbidden. In the case of other, other Shakti it prescribes, that is Parakriya and uh, sa Sadharani, in, in uh, substitute for uh, Maithuna, meditation by the worshipper upon the lotus feet of the Devi, together with the Japa of his Ishta Mantra. This rule, however, the commentator says, is not the universal application. Shiva has in this tantra prohibited the uh, Shiva has in this tantra prohibited sadhana with the last tattva with parakriya and sadharani shakti in the case of men of ordinary weak intellect ruled by lust. 
but for those who have by sadhana conquered their passions and attained the state of a true virtue or sid- or siddha there is no prohibition as to the mode of lata sadhana this tantra appears to be in fact a protest against the misuse of the tatva which had followed upon a relaxation of the original rules and conditions governing them without the pancha tatva in one form or another the shakti puja cannot be performed the mother of the universe must be worshiped with these elements by their use the universe jagat brahmanda itself is used as the article of worship wine signifies the power or shakti which produces all fiery elements meat and fish all terrestrial and aquatic animals mudra all vegetable life and mithuna the will ichha action kriya and knowledge gyana shak- uh, knowledge of the knowledge shakti gyana shakti of the uh, supreme prakriti productive productive of that great pleasure which accompanies the process of creation to the mother is thus offered the restless life of her universe <coughs> the object of all sadhana is the stimulation of the sattva guna stimulation of the sattva guna when by such when by such sadhana this guna largely preponderates the satvika sadhana suitable for men of a high type of divya bhava is adopted okay when by such sadhana this guna largely preponderates the satvika sadhana suitable for men of a high type of divya bhava is adopted in this latter sadhana the names of the pancha tatva are used symbolically for operations of a purely mental and spiritual character thus the kaivalya says that wine is that intoxicating knowledge acquired by wine is that intoxicate intoxicating knowledge okay we are now getting into symbolism here they are not literally wine now thus the kaivalya says that wine is that intoxicating knowledge acquired by yoga of the para brahman which renders the worshipper senseless as regards the external world just like literal wine would meat or mamsa is not any fleshy thing but the act whereby the sadhaka consigns all his acts to me or mam matsya fish is that satvika knowledge by which through the senses of mindness the worshipper worshipper sympathizes with the pleasure and pain of all beings interesting retelling of the entire concept okay i'll have to keep this in mind what is kaivalya let's see the footnote footnote says panchatat uh, panchatatva vichara by nilamani mukhopadhyaya okay so what is the uh, kaivalya is it is it a, a kind of tantra kaivalya tantra or is it a text i'll have to mark this since i am a uh, vegan most of the times and i'm big on animal rights <laughs> this interests me this intrigues me so matsya is that satvika knowledge by which through the senses sense of mindness the worshipper sympathizes with the pleasure and pain of all beings this is 180 degrees opposite mudra is the act of relinquishing all association with evil which results in bondage and mithuna is the u- union of the shakti kundalini with shiva in the body of the worshipper is the union of the shakti kundalini okay mithuna is the union of the shakti kundalini with shiva in the body of the worshipper this the yogini tantra says is the best of all unions for those who have already controlled their passions or yati according to the agama agama sara wine is soma dhara or lunar ambrosia which drops from the brahmanda uh, brahmarandra mamsa meat is the tongue ma of which its part amsa is speech mamsa so mamsa is speech because ma is tongue tongues amsa is mamsa the sadhaka in eating quote and quote eating it controls his speech okay in this case therefore <laughs> eating meat eating mamsa means controlling your speech not opening it uh, keval means only kaivalya means only ness grammatically it should mean so but is uh, since the sentence here says that kaivalya says that so is this a person or is it a text or is it a branch of uh, t- uh, tantra and there is something called a kaivalya dham as well in bengal it's pr- pretty popular near the jadavpur area are they talking about that in any way or that or the is the kaivalya dham a follower of these things possibly okay so uh, 
Mamsa meat is the tongue ma of which its part amsa is speech the sadhaka in quote unquote eating it controls his its his speech matsya fish are those two which are constantly moving in those two rivers ida and pingala pingala nadi so again matsya does not mean actual fish here he who controls his breath by pranayama quote unquote eats them by kumbhaka mudra is the awakening of knowledge in the pericarp of the great sahasrara chakra where the atma like mercury resplendent as 10 million suns and deliciously cool as 10 million moons is united with the devi kundalini the esoteric meaning of maithuna is thus stated by the agama that is the ruddy hued letter r is in the kunda and the letter ma in the shape of bindu is in the mahayoni when makara ma seated on the hamsa in the form of akara a uh, unites with rakara ra then the brahma gyana which is the source of supreme bliss is gained by the sadhaka who is then called atmarama atmarama for his enjoyment is because of, for his enjoyment is in the atma in the sahasrara this is the union on the purely sattvic plane which corresponds on the rajasika plane to the union of shiva and shakti in the persons of their worshipers okay this is the union on the purely sattvic plane which corresponds on the rajasika plane to the union of shiva and shakti in the persons of their worshipers persons meaning in the bodies of their worshipers the union of shiva and shakti is described as a true yoga from which as the yamal says arises the joy arises that joy which is known as the supreme bliss ananda paramananda i guess supreme bliss the union of shiva and shakti is described as a true yoga from which as the yamal says arises that joy which is known as the supreme bliss uh, the quote is given samyo uh, samyoga jayate svakhyam paramananda uh, paramananda lakshanam yeah so i was right in saying that its supreme bliss is paramananda um hey i'm i'm not boasting guys i'm just uh, having fun uh, finding out the actual um, uh, translations of these words because it's all new to me okay now the last kind of puja okay chakra puja and i've never heard of it uh here to learn is saying so why call it mamsa just call it uh, vaksamyam speech control because we are in the school apologetic school guys again that that's why i'm saying that hinduism's apologetics also have begun so early on uh chakra puja these are all later philosophizations they they are counters to something that was already happening so chakra puja worship with the panchatatva generally takes place in an assembly called a chakra which is composed of men sadhaka and women shakti or bhairava and bhairavi the worshipers sit in a circle chakra men and women alternatively the shakti sitting on the left of the sadhaka the lord of the chakra uh, who is called chakrasvamin or chakra uh, chakreshwara sits with his shakti in, in the center where the wine jar and other articles used in the worship are kept during the chakra all eat drink and worship together there being no distinction of caste no pashu should however be introduced there are various kinds of chakras such as the veera raja deva maha chakras productive it is said of various fruits of the participators therein chapter 6 of the mahanirvana tantra deals with the panchatatva and chapter 8 gives an account of the bhairavi and uh, tatva bhairavi and tatva or divya chakras the latter is for worshipers of the brahma mantra now uh, your your uh, question reminds me of another thing that then what is the difference between uh, them people who are delving into apologetics or uh, coming up with the quote unquote later philosophizations which i'm merely arguing i'm not uh, i'm maybe i'm wrong but uh, as far as i can understand these these seem to be later philosophizations or uh, apologetics in a way but then what is the difference between them and and a commie bengali today waking up and doing something to uh, break stereotypes quote unquote that is uh they have people who have come up with these later philosophization or uh, apologetics is that of course th- those people have read all these texts inside out and then they have come up with these 
different definitions maybe with the end goal that they really don't want to kill the animal and they must have had debates with other people and sometimes may they may have lost or won debates maybe and uh, and then gradually they got considered as just another sect or a small sampradaya inside even tantra so you could argue that all these people who are breaking stereotypes one fine morning maybe 100 years from now even they will be considered a sect inside hinduism which is very possible um, and the wo rohini dharmapal uh, uh, doing english uh, uh, mantras for for quote and quote vedic wedding weddings but um, it will always be uh, a, a distortion to a large extent because these people have not actually read any primary sources maybe maybe rohini dharmapal has but people uh, random feminist women saying that they are breaking gender stereotypes by putting putting sindur on the husband they have not re- read any fucking thing not one single text of primary source next chapter begins yoga <sighs> this word derived from the root yuj to join is in grammar samdhi uh, in logic is in grammar samdhi grammatically the word yoga is uh, sam- samdhi or as pronounced in bengali sandhi in logic it is uh, avayava uh, avayava avayava shakti okay avayav shakti avayava shakti shakti or the power of the parts taken together and in its most widely known and present sense it is the yoga is the union of the jiva or embodied spirit with the paramatma or supreme spirit or even in <laughs> if we take in to context uh, the take into account even the uh, more recent explanation of yoga it's some just basic stretching because yoga is not hindu quote and quote and the practices by which this union may be attained that's yoga there is a natural yoga in which all beings are for it is uh, only by virtue of this identity in fact that they exist this position is common ground though in practice too frequently overlooked primus modus unionis est co de deus what why are we reading germany german all of a sudden okay squid let's skip this part the mist the mystical theologian cited however proceeds to say quote okay again it's in german what's going on here let's see I, is it a translation of something else let's see what the footnotes say as the sharada tilaka says uh, aikyam jivat मनो मनोरा हुर्योगम योग विश्वर योग विसार एंड द नेक्स्ट ऑल द जर्मन थिंग्स वी वर स्ट रीडिंग वर फ्रॉम सुमा थियोलॉजी ए मिस्टिक ए ओके सो द एंटायर थिंग इज इन जर्मनी द इज नो पॉइंट रीडिंग दिस सो मे बी इट विल बी नाउ एक्सप्लेन्ड बाय द ऑथर it is of this special yoga though not in reality more quote and quote supernatural than the first that we here deal yoga in its technical sense is the realization of this identity which exists though it is not known by the destruction of the false appearance of separation quote there is no bond equal in strength to maya and no force greater to de- no force greater to destroy that bond than yoga okay there is no bond equal in the strength to maya and no force greater to destroy that bond destroy that maya than yoga there is no better friend than knowledge gyana nor worse enemy than egoism ahamkara as to learn the shastra one must learn the alphabet in the same way yoga is necessary for the acquirement of tatva gyana truth end quote this is from the gherand samhita the animal body is the result of action and from the body flows action the process being compared to uh, the seesaw movement of uh, uh, ghati yantra or water water lifter through their actions beings continually go from birth to death the complete attainment of the fruit of yoga phala of yoga is lasting and unchanging life in the no- in the nominal in the nominal world of the absolute okay the complete attainment of the fruit of yoga is lasting and unchanging life in the nominal world of the absolute noumenal n o u m e n a l noumenal world of the absolute yoga is variously named according to the methods employed 
but the two main divisions are those of the hatha yoga or uh, ghatastha yoga and samadhi yoga of which raja yoga is one of the forms hatha yoga is com commonly misunderstood both in its definition and aim being frequently identified with exaggerated forms of self mortification wait let me just fix my t-shirt a little which book reading is this the one mentioned in the name only introduction to tantra shastra the gheranda samhita well defines it to be quote the means whereby the excellent raja yoga is attained actual union is not the result of hatha yoga alone which is concerned with certain physical processes preparatory or auxiliary to the control of the mind by which alone union may be directly attained it is however not meant that all processes of hatha hatha yoga here or in the books described are necessary for the attainment of raja yoga what is necessary must be determined according to the circumstances of each particular case so the means whereby the excellent raja yoga uh, is attained is uh, yoga actual union is not the result of hatha yoga alone which is concerned with certain physical processes per preparatory or auxiliary to the control of the mind hmm so hatha yoga can then therefore be called basically just the workout part of it and of course workout involves some bit of mind control and discipline anyway what is necessary must be determined according to the circumstances of each particular case what is suited or necessary in one case may may not be so for another a peculiar feature of tantra tantra virachara is the union of the sadhaka and his shakti in lata sadhana this is a process which is expressly for forbidden to pashus by the same tantras which prescribe it for the veera the union of shiva and shakti in the higher sadhana is different in form being the union of the kundalini shakti of the muladhara with the bindu which is upon the sahasrara this process called the piercing of the six chakras is described later on in a separate paragraph though however all hatha yoga processes are not necessary some at least are generally considered to be so generally considered to be not necessary thus in the well known ashtang uh, ashtanga yoga or uh, eight limb yoga of which samadhi is the highest end the physical conditions and processes known as asana and pranayama are prescribed this yoga prescribes five exterior bahiranga methods for the subjugation of the body namely yama forbearance of uh, or self control such as sexual continence avoidance of harm to others uh, that is ahimsa kindness forgiveness uh, forgiveness the doing of good without desire for reward absence of uh, uh, covetousness temperance purity of mind and body etc number 2 niyama religious observances charity austerities reading of the shastra and ishvara pranidhana uh, persevering devotion to the lord number 3 asana seated positions or postures number 4 pranayama regulation of the breath a yogi renders the vital airs equable and conscious and consciously produces the state of respiration which is favorable for mental concentration as others do it occasionally and unconsciously number 5 is pratyahara restraint of the senses senses which follows in in the path of the other four processes which deal with subjugation of the body there are then three interior methods or yoga yoganga methods for the subjugation of the mind namely now number 6 dharana or attention studying of the mind the fixing of the internal organ or chitta in the particular manner indicated in the works on yoga number 7 dhyana or the uniform continuous contemplation of the subject of thought and number 8 that samadhi which is called savikalpa samadhi savikalpa samadhi is a deeper and more intense contemplation on the self to the exclusion of all other objects and continuing trance or ecstasy this ecstasy is perfected to the stage of the removal of the slightest trace of the distinction of subject and object in nirvikalpa samadhi in which there is complete union with the paramatma or divine spirit there is no dif distinction and difference between uh, uh, god and uh, the the worshipper that is the goal at least 
by by vairagya or dispassion or detachment and keeping the mind in its unmodified state yoga is attained this knowledge aham brahmasmi i am the brahman does not produce liberation or moksha but is liberation itself whether yoga is spoken of as the union of kula kundalini with param shiva or the union of the individual soul that is jivatma with the supreme soul paramatma or as the state of mind in which all outward thought is suppressed or as the controlling or suppression of the thinking faculty that is chitta vritti or as the union of the moon and the sun ida and pingala nadis or prana and apana or nada and bindu the meaning and the end are in each case the same and then after this how can someone say that yoga is not hindu even sadguru has said yoga is not hindu yoga in seeking mental control and concentration makes use of certain preliminary physical processes sadhana such as the satkarma asana mudra and pranayama by these four processes and three mental acts seven qualities known as shodhana dridhata sthirata dhairya laghava pratyaksha nirliptava are acquired all of these are bengali words used every day shodhan dridhat acha this is the only word i've never heard in bengali as well dridhata oh this is probably dridhata yeah this is not dridhata yeah dridhata meaning uh, means uh, the determination so shodhan dridhata sthirata dhairya laghob pratyakshor nirlipto nirliptatto these are the bengali pronunciations and we use these words every day now shodhana we are going to learn all of these separately now this is going to be great shodhana shodhana satkarma the first or cleansing is effected by the six processes known as the satkarma of these the first is dhoti or washing okay yahi se dhona word aaya hai shayad dhoa dhoti or washing which is fourfold or inward washing which is antar dhoti cleansing of the teeth danta dhoti etc of the heart riddha rid uh, rid dhoti and of the rectum mula dhoti antar dhoti is also fourfold namely uh, uh, vatasara by which air is drawn into the belly and then expelled vatasara then varisara by which the body is filled with water which is then evacuated by the anus because vari means water body varisara uh, vatsara uh vat uh, actually vatsayan i get uh, doesn't it mean window therefore vat probably means wind and therefore vatsara means air drawn into the belly just yesterday i was realizing that even a common bengali word even as a colloquial bengali term like apod is also a sanskrit term because uh, 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 batuk bhairava is also known as apad uddharanayana so one who uh, uddhar give does your uddhar from uh, from from uh, apad apad meaning problems uh, okay then uh, vannisara in which the uh, nabi granthi is made to touch the spinal column or meru and bahishkrita in which the belly is by kakini mudra filled with af what is af a i f which is retained half a jama and then sent downward let's see the footnotes now fit footnote is a, ja- a jama is 3 hours okay danta dhauti is fourfold consisting of the cleansing of the foot of the cleansing of the root of the teeth and tongue the ears and the hollow of the forehead kapala randhra rand kapala randhra by ridhauti f- by ridhauti phlegm and bile are removed this is done by a stick danta dhauti or cloth vasa dhauti pushed into the throat or swallowed or by vomiting vamana dhauti mula dhauti is done done to cleanse the exit of the apana vayu either with the middle finger or water or the stalk of a turmeric uh, turmeric plant this is almost like a colonoscopy at this point vasti the second of the satkarma is twofold and is either of the dry shushka or watery jala kind in the second form in the jala kind the yogi sits in the ut 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 kata utkatasana okay utkatasana the yogi sits in the utkatasana uh, utkatasana posture in water up to the navel 
and the anus is contracted and expanded by avini mudra avini mudra avini mudra or the same is done in the uh, paschimottanasana uh, paschimottanasana paschimottanasana paschimottan asana okay so it has something to do with west paschimottanasana how to pronounce this properly paschimottanasana right paschimottanasa uh, paschimottanasana and the abdomen below the navel is gently moved in neti the nostrils are cleansed with a piece of with a piece of string lolliki is the whirling of the belly from side to side uh, in trataka the yogi without winking gazes at some minute object until the tears start from his eyes by this the celestial vision or divya drishti so often referred to in the tantrika upasana is acquired kapalabhati is a process of the removal of phlegm and is threefold vatakrama by inhalation and exhalation uh, vyutkrama by water drawn through the nostrils and ejected through the mouth and sitkrama the reverse process okay so water taken from the mouth and uh, and then pushed out from the nostrils these are the various processes by which the body is cleansed and made pure for the yoga practice to follow now dhrirata asana uh, dhrirata or strength or firmness the acquisition of which is the second of the above mentioned processes is attained by asana asanas are postures of the body the term is generally described as modes of seating the body but the posture is not necessarily a sitting one for some asanas are done on the belly back hands etc it is said that the asanas are as numerous as living beings and that there are 8,400,000 of these 1600 are declared to be excellent and out of these 32 are auspicious for men which are described in detail two of the commonest of these are mukta padmas uh, padmasana padmasana the loosened lotus feet the ordinary position of worship and uh baddha padmasana baddha padmasana patanjali on the subject of asana merely points out what are good conditions leaving each one to settle the details for himself according to his own requirements there are certain asanas which are peculiar to the tantras such as the mundasana chitasana and uh, savasana shavasana in which skulls the funeral pyre and the corpse respectively form the seat of the sadhaka mundasana chitasana and uh, chitasana okay mundasana chitasana and uh, shavasana these though they may have other ritual objects form part of the discipline for the conquest of fear and the attainment of indifference which is the quality of a yogi and so the tantras prescribe as the scene of such rites the solitary mountain top the lonely empty house and riverside and the cremation ground the interior cremation ground is there where the karmic body and its passions are consumed in the ire of knowledge now sthirata mudras sthirata or fortitude is acquired by the practice of the mudras the mudras dealt with in works of hatha yoga are positions of the body they are gymnastic health giving and destructive of disease and of death such as the jaladhara jaladhara and other mudras they also preserve from injury by fire water or air bodily action and the health resulting therefore there from react upon the mind and by the union of a perfect mind and body siddhi is by their means attained the gheranda samhita samhita describes a number of mudras of which those of importance may be selected in the celebrated yoni mudra the yogi in siddhasana stops with his fingers the ears eyes nostrils and mouth he inhales prana vayu by kakini mudra and unites it with apana vayu meditating in their order upon the six chakras he arouses the sleeping kula kundalini by the mantra hum hamsa and raises her to the sahasrara then deeming himself pervaded with the shakti and in blissful union or sangam with shiva he meditates upon himself as by reason of that union bliss itself and the brahman 
Ashwini Mudra consists of the repeated contraction and expansion of the anus for the for the purpose of shodhana or of contraction to restrain the apana in uh, Shat Chakra Bheda. Shakti Chalana employs the latter mudra which is repeated until Vayu manifests in the Shushumna. The process is accompanied by inhalation and union of prana and apana whilst in Siddhasana. Now Dhairya and Pratyahara. Dhairya or steadiness is produced by Pratyahara. Pratyahara is the restraint of the senses, the freeing of the mind from all distractions and the keeping of it under control of the Atma. The mind is withdrawn from whatsoever from the mind is withdrawn from whatsoever direction it may tend by the dominant and directing self, self with capital S here. Pratyahara destroys the six sins. Now Laghava Pranayama. From Pranayama arises Laghava, that is lightness. All beings say the uh, Ajapa Gayatri, which is the expulsion of the breath by Hamkara and its inspiration by uh, Sakara 21,600 times a day. This basically means uh, subconsciously breathing. Whenever you are breathing, it's basically uh, Ajapa Gayatri. You are doing it unconsciously, subconsciously both. Ordinarily, the breath goes forth a distance of 12 fingers breadth but in singing, eating, walking, sleeping, sex, the distances are 16, 20, 24, 30 and 36 breaths, uh, breadth, okay, not breadth, B-R-E-A-D-T-H, uh, 36 breaths respectively. In violent exercise, these distances are exceeded, the greatest distance being 96 breaths. Where the breathing is under the normal distance, life is prolonged. Where it is above that, it is shortened. Puraka is inspiration and Rechaka expiration. Kumbhaka is the retention of the breath between these two movements. This I have read in Sri Vigyan Bhairav Tantra as well. The moment, the, the holding of the, 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 even the unconscious holding of the breath, the gap between two breaths, that's the Kumbhaka. Kumbhaka is according to the Gheranda Samhita of eight kinds. Sahita, Surya Bheda, Ujjayi, Sitali, uh, Bhastrika, Brahmari, Murcha, and Kevali. Pranayama similarly varies. varies. Pranayama is the control of the breath and other vital airs. It awakens Shakti, frees from disease, produces detachment from the world, and bliss. It is of varying values, being the best or Uttama, where the measure is 20. Middling or Madhyama, when at 16, it produces spinal tremor and inferior or adhama when at 12 it induces perspiration. It is necessary that the nari should be cleansed for air because air does not enter those which are impure. The cleansing of the nari or nari shuddhi is either samanu or nirmanu, samanu or nirmanu that is with or without the use of bija. According to the first form in the, nir in the samanu, the yogi in Padmasana does Guru Nyasa according to the directions of the Guru. Meditating on Yam, he does Japa through Ira of the Bija 16 times, Bija Mantra, Kumbhaka with Japa of Bija 64 times and then exhalation through the Solar Nadi and Japa of Bija 32 times. Fire is raised from Man Manipura and united with Prithvi. Then follows, these are all chakras. The, the, then follows inhalation by the solar nadi with the vanni bija 16 times, kumbhaka with 64 japa, followed by exhalation through the lunar nadi and japa of the bija 32 times. He then meditates on the lunar brilliance, gazing at the tip of the nose and inhales ira with, the, with japa of the bija thumb 16 times. Kumbhaka is done with the bija vam 64 times. He then thinks of himself as flooded by nectar and considers that the nadis have been washed. He exhales by pingala with 32 japa of the bija lum and considers himself thereby as strengthened. He then takes his seat on a mat of kusha grass, a deer skin etc and facing east or north does pranayama. 
For this exercise, there must be, in addition to to Nadi Shuddhi, consideration of proper place, time, and food. Thus, the place should not be so distant as to induce anxiety. Not in an un unprotected place, such as a forest, not a city or or crowded locality, which induces uh, distraction. The food should be pure and of a vegetarian character. It should not be too hot or too cold, pungent, sour, salt, or bitter. Fasting. uh the taking of one meal a day and the like are prohibited on the contrary the yogi should not remain without food for more than one jama or 3 hours interesting the food taken should be light and strengthening long walks and other violent exercises should be avoided as also certainly in the case of beginners sexual intercourse should be avoided the stomach should only be half filled yoga should should be commenced it is said in spring or autumn uh oh, yoga yoga should com should be commenced it is said in spring or autumn this is actually interesting that repeated eating of in uh, after 3 hours actually increases metabolism to such a high extent that you lose a lot of useless fat anyway as stated the forms of pranayama vary vary thus sahita which is uh, either with sagarbha or without nir uh, nirgarbha nirgarbha bija is according to the former form to the sagarbha form as follows the sadhaka meditates on vidhi that is brahma who is full of rajoguna red in color and the image of akara he inhales by iranadi iranadi in six measures or matra before kumbhaka he does the uh, uddhyana bhanda mudra, mudra meditating on hari or vishnu as uh, sat as sat satva maya sa satva maya and the black bija ukara he does kumbhaka that is the small gap between two breaths e exhalation and inhalation with 64 japa of the bija then meditating on shiva as tamo maya and his white bija maka makara he exhales through pingala with 32 japa of the bija then inhaling by pingala he does kumbhaka and exhales by ida with the same bija the process is repeated in the normal and reversed order the process is repeated in the normal and reversed order na pratyaksha dhyana through dhyana is gained the third quality of realization or pratyaksha dhyana or meditation is of three kinds sthula or gross jyoti and sukshma or subtle in the first the form of the devata is brought before the mind one form of dhyana for this purpose is as follows let the sadhaka think of the great ocean of nectar in his heart in the middle of that ocean is the island of gems the shores of which are made of power powdered gems the island is clothed with a kadamba forest in yellow blossom the forest is surrounded by malati champaka parijata and other fragrant trees in the midst of the kadamba forest there rises the beautiful kalpa tree laden with flesh fresh blossom and fruit amidst its leaves the black bees hum and the coel birds make love its four branches are the four vedas under the tree under under the tree there is a great mandapa of precious stones and within it a beautiful bed on which let him picture to himself his ishta devta the guru will direct him as to the form raiment vahana and the title of the devta jyotir jyotir dhyana is the infusion of fire and life tejas into the form so imagined in the muladhara lies the snake like kundalini there the jivatma as it were the tapering flame of a candle dwells meaning lives the sadhaka then meditates upon the tejomaya brahman or alternatively between the eyebrows on uh, pranavatmaka the flame emitting its luster sukshma dhyana is meditation on kundalini with uh, with shambhavi mudra after she has been roused she with capital s by this yoga the atma revealed atma is revealed atma atma shaksha atma shaksatkara now nil uh, nirliptatva samadhi uh, nirliptatva attained by samadhi lastly through samadhi the quality of nirliptatva or detachment nirliptatva and thereafter mukti liberation is attained samadhi considered as a process is intense mental concentration with freedom from all sankalpa and attachment to the world and all sense of quote unquote mindness 
और सेल्फ इंटरेस्ट ममता एक्चुअली ममता डज नॉट देयर फॉर मीन लव और स्नेह विच वी हैव अंडरस्टूड इन बेंगोली ममता मीन सेल्फिशनेस बिकॉज ममा इज इज सेल्फ कंसिडर्ड एज द रिजल्ट ऑफ सच प्रोसेस इट इज द यूनियन ऑफ जीव विद द परमात्मा नाउ फॉर्म्स ऑफ समाधि योगा दिस समाधि योगा इज अकॉर्डिंग टू द घेरंद संहिता ऑफ सिक्स काइंड ध्यान योगा समाधि अटेंड बाई शांभवी मुद्रा इन विच आफ्टर द मेडिटेशन ऑन द बिंदु ब्राह्मण एंड रियलाइजेशन ऑफ द आत्मा आत्मा और आत्मा प्रत्यक्ष द लैटर दैट इज द बिंदु ब्राह्मण इज रिजॉल्व इन टू द महाकाश देन नंबर टू ओके समाधि योगा is according to the gherandha samhita of six kinds the first kind is dhyana yoga samadhi which is attained by shambhavi mudra in which after the meditation on the bindu brahman and realization of the atma which which is called atma pratyaksha the bindu brahman is resolved into the mahakasha then number 2 uh, nada yoga attained by uh, khechari khechari mudra in which the frenum of the tongue is cut and the latter is lengthened until it reaches the space between the eyebrows and is then introduced in a reversed position into the mouth this i have heard about i was uh, listening to this uh, one younger guy who had come to uh, beer by sub podcast also discussing bhairav etc uh bhairav upasana and uh, tantra he had talked about this this particular mudra khechari mudra then rasananda yoga attained by kumbhaka in which the sadhaka in a silent uh, silent place closes both ears and does puraka and kumbhaka until he hears the word nada in sounds varying in strength from that of the cricket's chirp to that of the large kettle drum okay does puraka and kumbhaka until he hears the word nada in all sounds okay from the cricket's chirp to that of the large kettle drum by daily practice the anahata sound is heard and the jyoti with the manas therein is seen which is ultimately dissolved in the supreme vishnu next is laya siddhi, siddhi yoga accomplished by the celebrated yoni mudra already described the sadhaka thinking of himself as shakti and the paramatma as purusha feels himself in union or sangam with shiva and enjoys with him the bliss which is uh, shringa shringarasa and becomes bliss itself or the brahman next is bhakti yoga in which meditation is made on the yeah mamata is minus a mother feels her strong attachment that her child is part of her mine that's what minus mamta hmm actually uh, it is used in uh, in in a pretty secular uh, sense in this case so anything that you consider mine that therefore attachment itself is is mamata minus self interest is is uh, called uh, mamta is translated as self interest here so therefore mother's love can also be mamta but something else other things can also be mamta okay bhakti yoga in which meditation is made on the ishta devta with devotion or bhakti until with tears flowing from the excess of bliss the ecstatic condition is attained next raja yoga accomplished by the aid of the uh, manumurcha kumbhaka here the manas detached from uh, manas detached from all worldly objects is fixed between the eyebrows in agya chakra and kumbhaka is done by the union of the manas with the atma in which the gyani sees all things raja yoga samadhi is attained now sat chakra or sat chakra bheda the piercing of the six chakras is one of the most important subjects dealt with in the tantra and is part of the practical yoga process of which they treat details of practice can only be learned from a guru but generally it may be said that the particular is raised to the universal life which as chit is realizable only in the sahasrara in the following manner which is the jivatma in the subtle body the receptacle of the five vital layers or pancha prana mind in its three aspects of manas ahamkara and buddhi and the five organs of perception which is pancha gyanendriyas 
is united with the kunda uh, kula kundalini the kandarpa or kama vayu in the muladhara a form of the apana vayu is given a leftward revolution and the fire which is around kundalini is kindled by the bija hum and the heat of the fire thus kindled the coiled and sleeping kundalini is awakened she who lay asleep around swayambhuva uh, swayambhulinga with her coils three circles and a half closing entrance closing the entrance of the brahmadwara will on being roused enter that door and move upwards united with the jivatma on this upward movement brahma savitri dakini dakini shakti the devas bija and vritti are dissolved in the body of kundalini the mahimandala or prithvi is converted into the bija lam and is also merged into her in her body when kundalini leaves the muladhara that lotus which on the awakening of kundalini had opened and turned its flower upwards again closes and hangs downward as kundalini reaches the swadhisthana chakra that lotus opens out lotus meaning chakra that lotus opens out and lifts its flowers upwards upon the entrance of kundalini mahavishnu mahalakshmi okay upon the entrance of kundalini mahavishnu mahalakshmi saraswati rakini shakti deva matras and vritti vaikuntha dhama golaka and the deva and devi residing therein are dissolved in the body of kundalini the prithvi or earth bija lam is dissolved in apas and apas converted into the bija vam remains in the body of kundalini when the devi reaches the manipura chakra all that is in the chakra merges in her body the varuna bija vam is dissolved in fire which remains in the body of the devi as the bija rang the chakra is called the brahma granthi or knot of brahma not meaning k n o t the piercing of this chakra may involved consider may involve considerable pain physical disorder and even disease on this account the directions of an experienced guru are necessary and therefore also other modes of yoga have been recommended for those to whom they are applicable because in such modes activity is provoked directly in the higher center and it is not necessary that the lower chakra should be pierced kundalini next reaches the anahata chakra where all which is therein is merged in her the bija of tejas ram disappears in vayu and vayu converted into its bija yam merges in the body of kundalini this chakra is known as vishnu granthi not of vishnu kundalini then ascends to the abode of bharati or saraswati or the vishuddha chakra upon her entrance ardhanarish ardhanarishvara shiva ardhanarishvara shiva shakini the 16 vowels mantra etc are dissolved in the body of kundalini the bija vayu yam is dissolved in akasha which itself being transformed into the bija hum is merged in the body of kundalini piercing the lalana chakra uh, piercing the lala, lalana chakra lalana chakra the devi reaches the agya chakra where parama shiva siddha kali the deva gunas and all else therein are absorbed into her body the bija of akasha hum is merged in the manasa chakra and mind itself in the body of kundalini the agya chakra is known as rudra granthi or not of rudra or shiva after this chakra has been pierced kundalini of her own motion unites with parama shiva after this chakra has been pierced kundalini of her own motion unites with parama shiva as she proceeds upwards from the two petaled lotus two petaled lotus the niralam ni, niralamba puri pranava nada etc are merged in her the kundalini has then in her progress upwards absorbed in herself the 24 tattvas commencing with the gross elements and then unites herself and becomes one with parama shiva this is the maithuna or quotation of the satvika pancha tattvas the nectar which flows from such union flows with kshudra brahmanda not not shudra kshudra the, the nectar which flows from such union floods the kshudra brahmanda or human body it is then the sadhaka 
forget forgetful of all in this world is immersed in ineffable bliss there after the sadhaka thinking of the vayu bija yam as being in the left nostril inhales to through ida 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 nadi and ida nadi making japa of the bija 16 times then closing both nostrils he makes japa of the bija 64 times he then thinks the that black man of sin or papa purusha in the left cavity of the abdomen is being dried up by air and so thinking and sing and in thinking this way he exhales through the right nostril pingala making japa of the bija 32 times the sadhaka then meditating upon the red colored bija ram in the manipura inhales making 16 japas of bija and then closes the nostrils making 64 japas while making the japa he thinks that the body of the that quote unquote man of sin or pap purusha is being burnt and reduces to and reduced to ashes by fire he then exhales through the right nostril with 32 japas he then meditates upon the white chandra bija hum he next inhales through ida making japa of the bija 16 times closes both nostrils with japa done 64 times and exhales through the pingala with 32 japas during inhalation holding of breath and exhalation he should consider that a new celestial body is being formed by the nectar dropping from the moon composed of all the letters of the alphabet matrika varna in a similar way with the bija vam the formation of the body is continued and with the bija lam it is completed and strengthened lastly with the mantra soham the sadhaka leads the jivatma into the heart thus kundalini who has enjoyed her union with the Param- paramashiva sets out on her return journey the way she came as she passes through each of the chakras all that she has absorbed there for there from come out from herself and take their several places in the chakra in this manner she again reaches the muladhara when all that is described to be in the chakras are in the position which they occupied before her awakening the guru's instructions are to go above the agya chakra but no special directions are given for after this chakra for after this chakra has been pierced the sadhaka can reach the brahmasthana unaided without any help below the quote unquote seventh mouth mouth of shiva the relationship of guru and shishya ends the instructions of the seventh am, uh, amnaya are not expressed aprakashita the instructions of the seventh amnaya are not expressed are therefore they are aprakashita now sin and virtue let me have some coffee again what is the purpose of kundalini yoga to to unite with god that is the difference between as far as we learned today at least difference between just the exercise as- aspects of it which i guess is one of the prime features of hatha yoga and the rest of the ex- entire concept of yoga itself that is uh, to uh, to be one with uh, with the with the gods or unite uh, your inner uh, energy shakti with the uh, param shiva union with god union is yog first of all addition so two things are getting added up that's why the name yoga is there in, in the first place so uh, we all know that why is yoga hindu because it's not just stretching and workouts so everything that is not stretching and workout stretching and workout is is some of the steps of course but the point is this for this reason okay now sin and virtue according to christian conceptions sin is a violation of the personal will of and apostasy from god the flesh is the source of lusts which oppose god's commands and in this lies its positive significance for the origin of a bias of life against god according to saint thomas in the original state no longer held as a normal the lower powers were subordinate to reason and reason sub- was subject meaning subordinate to god the quote unquote original sin is formally a quote defect of original righteousness and materially uh, concupiscence concupiscence as saint paul says in roman chapter 7 uh, verse 8 14 the pneumatic law which declares war on the lusts meets with opposition from 
the law in the members quote unquote law in the members these and similar notions involve a religious and moral conscious judgment which is assumed to exist in humanity alone hindu notions of papa wrong and punya that which is pure holy and right have a wider content the latter that is punya is accordance and working with the will of ishvara of whom the jiva is itself the embodiment that is us as manifested at the particular time in the general direction taken by the cosmic process as the former is the contrary okay papa is the contrary because they are not uh, manifested at the particular time in the general di direction taken by the cosmic process the two terms are relative to the state of evolution and the surrounding circumstances of the jiva to which they are applied thus the impulse towards individuality okay the impulse towards individuality which is necessary and just on the path of inclination or quote unquote going forth pravritti marga is wrongful as a hindrance to the attainment of unity which is the goal of the path of return nivritti marga where inclinations should stop should cease let's read the sentence once again the two terms papa and punya are relative to the state of evolution so in in what phase of evolution you are in and the surrounding circumstances of the jiva to which they are applied thus the impulse towards individuality which is necessary and just on the path of inclination or going forth is wrongful as a hindrance to the attainment of unity which is the goal of the path of return where inclinations should cease in short what makes for progress on the one path is a hindrance on the other the matter when rightly understood is not viewed from the juristic standpoint of an external lawgiver except perhaps sometimes popularly he uh, lawgiver or his commands okay the matter when rightly understood is not viewed from the juristic standpoint of an external lawgiver or his commands his with capital h and those subject to it but from that in which the exemplification of the moral law okay the exemplification of the moral law is regarded as the true and proper expression of the jiva's own evolution this is pretty tough not tough advanced advanced so uh the matter when rightly understood is that in which the exemplification of the moral law is regarded as the true and proper expression of the jiva's own evolution wow so uh whether you are committing pap or punya is is a is a is a way to uh, bas basically show or therefore people can people will basically understand that in what phase of evolution you are the matter when rightly understood is not uh, except perhaps uh, sometimes popularly viewed from the not viewed from the juristic uh, standpoint of an external lawgiver his commands and those subject to it but from that in which the exemplification of the moral law is regarded as the true and proper expression of the jiva's own evolution morality it has been said is the true nature of a being for the same reason wrong is is the destruction of morality what the jiva actually does is the result of his karma further the term jiva though commonly applicable to the human embodiment of the atma is not limited to it both papa and punya may therefore be manifested in beings of a lower rank than that of humanity uh, in so far as what they do what they do is a hindrance to their true development whether consciously or unconsciously thus in the yoga vashishta it is said that even a creeping plant acquired merit by association with the holy muni on whose house it grows on whose uh, dwelling it grows so even it's if even if it is uh, his uh, uh, home campus etc objectively considered sin is concisely defined as uh, dukkha janakam papam so whatever gives birth to uh, sadness uh, is is sin great i love this definition of sin dukkha janakam papam it is that which has been is and will be the cause of pain mental or physical in past present and future births that is sin the pain as the consequence of the action done need not be immediate though however the suffering may be experienced as a result later than the action of which it is the cause the consequence of the action is not really something separate but a part of the action itself okay the consequence of the action is not really something separate but a part of the action itself namely the part of it which belongs to the future the six chief sins so let's say 
you you uh should we get into giving examples uh think let's think of an example let's let's say harming an animal for for no reason let's say kicking a puppy so the puppy uh rolling rolling away and and getting hurt breaking some of its bones that that's all part of your uh action you did not just kick it you actually broke its bones in that way the six chief sins are kama krodha lobha moha mada matsarya which is lust anger covetousness ignorance or delusion pride and envy all wrong is at base self seeking in ignorance or disregard of the unity of the self in all creatures virtue or punya therefore as the contrary of sin is that which is the cause of happiness sukha janakam punyam that happiness is produced either in this or future births or leads to the enjoyment of heaven swarga virtue is that this is word for word what jordan peterson has been uh, apologizing for in christianity he says all these exact same things which have really understood that uh, which i've realized and i've said in some pra- past live streams about 3 4 months from today that he has begun on a journey of hinduification of christianity he says these things that no one ever gets away with anything and especially this this damn point he i think was the first one in christianity to have ever said maybe he will say some some other uh, saint has also said it but he says that hell is not that eternal place that you go underground Hen is he- heaven is not that uh, above sky where you go when you do good things hell is that suffering you face every day because of your bad habits that is a hindu concept virtue is that which leads to towards the unity whose substance is bliss ananda this good karma produces pleasant fruit which like all the results of karma is transitory it's never permanent this is what jordan peterson says as shruti says it is not by acts or the pindas offered by one's children or by wealth but by renunciation that men have attained liberation it is only by escape through knowledge that the jiva becoming one with the unchanging absolute attains lasting rest it is obvious that for those who obtain such release neither vice nor virtue which are categories of phenomenal being exist they don't exist for these people <sighs> now next chapter begins karma karma is action its cause and effect there is no uncaused action nor action without effect the past the present and the future are linked together as one whole the ichcha gyana and kriya shakti is manifest in the jivatma living on the worldly plane as desire knowledge and action as the brihadaranyaka upanishad says man is verily formed of desire the ichcha gyana and kriya shakti is manifest in the jivatma living in the worldly plane as desire knowledge and action okay important let me mark this desire knowledge and action so um ichcha gyana and kriya yeah ichcha gyana and kriya as the brihadaranyaka upanishad says man is verily formed of desire as is his desire so is his thought as is his thought so is his action as is his action so is attainment these fashion the individual's karma he who desires goes by work to the object on which his mind is set as he thinks so he becometh then as to action whatsoever a man sows that he shall reap the matter is not one of punishment and reward but of consequence and the consequence of action is but a part of it if anything is caused its result is caused the result being part of the original action which continues and is transformed into the result the jivatma experiences happiness for his good acts and misery for his evil ones karma is of three kinds vis a vis sam samchita karma that is the whole vast accumulated mass of the unexhausted karma of the past whether good or bad which has still to be worked out this past karma is the cause of the character of the succeeding births and as such is called samskara or vasana the second form of karma is uh, prarabdha or that part of the first which is ripe and which is worked out and bears fruit in the present birth the third is the new karma which man is continually making by his present and future actions and is called uh, vart- vartamana and agami agami yeah in bengali the third is the new karma which man is continually making by his present and 
future actions and is called vartamana and agami so these are all different kinds of karma samchita karma let me mark them separately samchita karma samskara or vasana karma vartamana karma and agami karma the embodied soul or jivatma whilst in the samskara in the whilst in the samsara uh, or phenomenal world that is in this world is by its nature never making present karma and experiencing the past is never making present karma and experiencing the past even the devas themselves are subject to time and karma by his karma a jiva may become an indra <laughs> maximus prime is saying by the way dada are you going for the full mahabharata hairstyle no actually main main problem is i'm 32 and my hair fall has begun and i want to cover it up to as much as possible and i miss my long hair from my metal head days as well by his so it's a last ditch attempt at having some good long hair by his karma a jiva may become an indra karma is thus the in, in invisible adrishta the product of ordained or prohibited actions capable of giving bodies it is either good or bad and altogether these are called the impurity of action karma mala karma mala even good action when done with a view to its fruits with its phal can never secure liberation those who think of the reward will receive benefit of the shape of that reward okay those who think of the reward will receive the benefit of the shape of that reward liberation is the work of shiva shakti and is gained only by brahma gyana the destruction of the will to separate life and realization of unity with the supreme this is very important this and this is a concept i have finally grasped okay so good action even if you are doing doing it with uh all all the results in mind even that can't give you liberation it can give you good phal maybe but not liberation those who think of the reward will receive benefit in the shape of that reward but liberation is something else liberation is the work of shiva shakti and is gained only by brahma gyana the distra- and uh, that is w- what is brahma gyana that is the destruction of the will to separate life and and what it is also it is also the realization of unity with the supreme which is done through yoga all accompanying action must be without thought of self with the cessation of desire the tie which binds man to the samsara is broken according to the tantra the sadhana and achara appropriate to an individual depends upon his karma a man's tendencies character and temperament is molded by his samchita karma as regards prarabdha karma it is unavoidable nothing can be done but to work it out some systems prescribe the same method for men of diverse tendencies but the tantra recognizes the force of karma and molds its methods to the temperament produced by it the needs of each vary as also the methods which will be the best suited to each to lead them to the common goal thus forms of worship which are permissible to the veera are forbidden to the pashu the guru must determine that for which the sadhaka is qualified for which he is adhikari next chapter begins four aims of being uh chul tene pichone namar thakle ramne chul to porbei no no th- that was falling anyway uh now this is because all the because i haven't actually had a proper haircut all this is uh, g- g- normally randomly growing from all over my face and uh, head that's why and my hair uh, quality is very wavy it's like kaji nozrul islam so if i leave it uncut it becomes all exactly like shorat chandra chattopadhyay and kaji nozrul islam so i have to wait wait out this phase with the hair band now otherwise it's going to be all hanging from here and when it when it becomes much longer then i'll have some fun times i got a haircut today uh, the barber put coconut oil on the trimmer now i smell like coconut nice i love myself i don't want it to be dissolved maybe moksha is not for me what's your caste <laughs> i'm realizing that i may be against casteism and birth based casteism mainly but i'm pretty happy as a vaishya and i'm doing pretty much vaishya things i have no no <laughs> no interests of becoming a, a spiritual teacher or leader or, or a guru or an expert i'm reading these scriptures as much as i can possibly do while keeping my personal profession uh, uh, intact four aims of being there is but one thing which all seek happiness though it be of different kinds and sought in different ways all forms whether sensual intellectual or spiritual are from the brahman who is itself the source and essence of all bliss 
and it is and it is bliss itself rasovaisa rasovaisa though issuing from the same source pleasure differs in its forms in being higher and lower transitory or durable or permanent though on the path of desire pravritti marga those on the path of desire or pravritti marga seek it through the enjoyments of this world bhukti or in the more durable though still impermanent delights of heaven swarga he who is on the path of return or nivritti marga seeks happiness not in the created worlds but in everlasting union with their primal source mukti and thus it is said that man can never be truly happy until he seeks shelter with brahman which is itself the great bliss rasam hi vayam lab lab labdva labdva anandi bhavati the eternal rhythm of the divine breath is outwards from spirit to matter and inwards from matter to spirit devi is maya devi as maya evolves the world as mahamaya she recalls it to herself the path of outgoing is the way of pravritti that of return is nivritti each of these movements is divine enjoyment or bhukti and liberation or mukti are each her gifts okay listen to this enjoyment and bhukti is also her gift and in the third chapter of the work cited it is said that of vishnu and shiva mukti only can be had but of devi both bhukti and mukti and this is so in so far as the devi is in a per- peculiar sense the source whence those material things come from which enjoyment or bhoga arises all jivas on their way to humanity and the bulk of humanity itself are on the forward path and rightly seek the enjoyment which is appropriate to their stage of evolution the thirst for life will continue to manifest itself until the point of return is reached and the outgoing energy is exhausted man must until such time remain on the path of desire this is interesting the thirst for life will continue to manifest itself until the point of return is reached and the outgoing energy is exhausted man must until such time remain on the path of desire in the hands of devi is the news of desire okay phanda news of desire devi herself is both desire and that light of knowledge which in the wise who have known enjoyment lays bare its futilities okay those who have known enjoyment know the futilities of enjoyment but one cannot renounce until one has enjoyed what a brilliant thing to say in the wise who have known enjoyment lays bare its futilities but one cannot renounce until one has enjoyed and so of the world process itself it is said that the unborn ones the purushas are both subservient to her prakriti to her that is prakriti and leave her by reason of viveka okay so what y- you are saying you are yet to enjoy all the desires and the fruits after you get all that maybe you will feel differently provision is made for the worldly life okay provision is made for the worldly life which is the outgoing pravritti of the supreme and so it is said that the tantrika has both enjoyment bhukti and liberation mukti bhakti mukti dayakam yeah that's in the uh, in the in the uh, kal bhairav ashtakam but enjoyment itself is not without its law desire is not to be let loose with without bridle the mental self is as is commonly said the charioteer of the body of which the senses are the horses contrary to mistaken notions on the subject the tantras take no exception to the ordinary rule that it is necessary not to let them run away if one would not be swept away and lost in the mighty force which is the descent into matter thought and action must be controlled by dharma hence the first three of the aims of life trivarga on the path of pravritti are dharma artha and kama now dharma dharma means that which is to be held fast or kept law usage custom religion piety right equity duty good works and morality all these are the uh, translations for dharma of course it is in short the eternal and immutable sanatana principles which hold together the universe in its parts and in its whole whether organic or inorganic matter that which supports and holds together the peoples of the universe is dharma it was declared for well being and bringeth well being 
it upholds and pre- we are talking about dharma okay it meaning dharma was declared for well being and bringeth well being it upholds and preserves because it supports and holds together it is called dharma by dharma are the people upheld it is in short not an artificial rule but the principle of right living the mark of dharma and of the good is achara good conduct from which dharma is born and fair fame is acquired here and hereafter the sage has embraced achara as the root of all tapas dharma is not only the principle of right living but also its application okay dharma is not only the principle of right living but also its application the the course of meritorious action by which man fits himself in this world heaven and liberation that is dharma dharma is also the result of good action that is the merit acquired thereby the basis of the sanatan sanatana dharma is revelation or shruti as presented in the various shastras smriti puranas and tantra in the devi Bhag- bhagavata it is said that in the kaliyuga vishnu in the form of vyasa divides the one veda into many parts with the desire to benefit men and with the knowledge that they are short lived and of small intelligence and hence unable to master the whole this dharma is the first of the four leading aims chaturvarga of all being <sighs> let let me uh, uh check the uh, comments दाढ़ी तो पीसफुल करना तो <laughs> आगे तो गोफ चिलो ना थिन लाइन बिटवीन वेशिया एंड बेशिया नो माय बर्थ इज कायस्था एंड आई एम अ लॉर्ड आध्यात्मिक ओके आई डोंट गेट द कायस्थ पार्ट व्हाट इज कायस्था इज इट द वॉरियर क्लास और द बनिया क्लास और इज द इंटेलेक्चुअल क्लास कायस्था इज प्रोबेबली द क्षत्रिय वर्जन ऑफ बेंगाल राइट आई गेस um but i would prefer dharma and bhakti than moksha if i get dissolved into the uh, into god how will i enjoy serving and worshiping god you won't exist uh, i was born into brahmanical patriarchy you only adopted it <laughs> so hold on wonder woman is based on devi amazonian myths are there for wonder woman because lasso of truth truth in context personal truth and yes the the news news yeah the only achara we have nowadays is mother's choice mixed veg vyasa also divided the adi puran yeah now kama kama is desire such as that for wealth success family position or other forms of happiness for self or others it also involves the notion of the necessity for the possession of great and noble aims okay see this is the importance of kama kama involves the notion of the necessity for the possession of great and noble aims desires and ambitions for such possession is the characteristic of greatness of soul desire whether of the higher or lower kinds must however be lawful because man is subject to dharma which regulates it artha artha wealth stands for the means by which this life may be maintained in the lower sense food drink money house land and other property and in the higher sense the means by which effect may be given to the higher desires such as that of worship for which artha may be necessary aid given to others and so forth and this is why artha is both meaning and wealth as a translation finally i have got my answer there is a lower explanation of artha and a higher explanation of artha the higher explanation of artha is meaning meaning of life like jordan peterson's concept maps of meaning his entire first book was about meaning giving meaning to things that is the higher meaning of artha the lower meaning is wealth in short it is all the necessary means by which all right desire whether of the lower or higher kinds may be fulfilled and for that you require meaning in life brilliant as the desire must be a right desire for man is subject to dharma which regulates them so also must be the means sought which are equally so governed The first group is known as the trivarga which must be cultivated trivarga meaning dharma artha kama the first group is known as the trivarga which must be cultivated whilst man is upon the pravritti marga okay you are in the middle of pravritti marga as of now the first group is known as the pravri- uh, trivarga which which must be cultivated whilst whilst man is upon the pravritti marga 
unless and until there is renun- there is renunciation on entrance upon the path of return where inclination ceases nivritti marga man must work for the ultimate goal by meritorious acts desires and by lawful means that is dharmartha kama whereby the lawful desires which give birth to righteous acts are realized and what did we just learn that if you don't even uh, have the enjoyment if you haven't even had those enjoyments how can you renounce it so renunciation comes after you have gained things through dharma artha and kama after that is moksha so since you haven't earned all those as of yet therefore you might think that moksha is irrelevant maybe after you've had all those maybe you will feel differently what a brilliant way to explain this this author is really great so so many things just got clarified in my in my mind for the first time after about two and a half years of struggling with these concepts ah brilliant unless and until there is renunciation on entrance upon the path of return where inclination ceases and decreases uh, or ceases means stops or that is nivritti marga man must work for the ultimate goal by meritorious acts dharma desires kama and by the lawful means this is this is being said that it is it is necessary that you follow these as well the the trivarga when you are in the pravritti marga awesome whilst on the pravritti marga the trivarga should be equally cultivated for he who is addicted to one one only is despicable okay dharmartha dharmartha kama uh, samameva sevya yo uh, here here kas uh, here here kasakta sa jano jaganya where is this quote from as a, as for instance a householder who spends all this all his time in worship to the neglect of his family and worldly estate the shastra says either one thing or the or the other when in the world he rightly of it when adopting the specifically religious life leave it a statement of the maxim be thorough okay this is this is insane whilst on the pravritti marga the trivarga should be equally cultivated all these three okay you shouldn't do any one just only one you should do all three dharma artha and kama this is fascinating for he who is addicted to one only is despicable so many things got clarified in this just one paragraph now moksha okay uh, here to learn is saying if artha is meaning how is it different from dharma dharma is not meaning dharma is duty let's see all those words that were men- mentioned okay dharma is law usage custom religion piety right equity duty good works and morality meaning is the why of it okay w- unless you have the why of something you will always wonder why sh- i mean what's the point of doing it or how would i do it how do i do it it's so impossible to do it once you realize that why you should do it for example workout once you get the why of it uh, in place that it's for your good health and you look good etc then it's it's much more of a uh, incentive to work out that's the meaning we assign to workouts and that meaning in the same way that we use meaning to achieve things and to sustain ourselves in the same way artha in the lower form in the lower sense is is basically money house etc or property that also helps us sustain so meaning is also wealth in in a way i still reading introduction to tantra shastra i took a break yeah yeah i'm still reading uh, introduction to tantra shastra i understood dharma as my nature my role in the cosmic play yeah that's what i'm saying i want to exist many bhaktas say they want to always take birth and worship krishna and enjoy it moksha won't allow that so they don't want moksha but bhakti yeah yeah okay let me see what afin was saying here but most birth brahmins i know they have no sign of brahmin yeah but they get offended when when we say these things uh i curse you with two pimples <laughs> no kayastha can be anything in accordance to uh, yagyaval ka smriti i see kayastha start their life as janma jati shudra but afterwards can go on to become uh, varna 124 permission to vedas has been given i see 
to kayastha by adi shankara but in modern times the supreme court ha has placed them in one or two category i see that's why i was thinking it's in uh, the it's the equivalent equivalent of kshatriya uh, interesting uh, okay i wish all moshas get moksha so we get moksha um bhakta suggest fifth varga called prema bhakti oh okay okay is that is then isn't it a uh, distinctly um uh, vaishnava sampradaya idea if artha is meaning okay uh, then here to learn be like dharma ke arth kya hai yeah, right that that was his basic question i understood dharma is my nature okay now moksha of the four aims moksha or mukti is the truly ultimate end for the other three are ever haunted by the fear of death the ender okay as in as mentioned in vishnu bhagavata mukti means loosening or liberation it is advisable to avoid the term salvation as also other christian terms which connote different though is in in a loose sense analogous ideas according to the christian doctrine or uh, soteriology faith in christ's gospel and in his church affects salvation which is the forgiveness of sins mediated by christ's redeeming activity saving from judgment and admitting to the kingdom of god on the other hand mukti means loosening from the bonds of the samsara or the phenomenal existence resulting in a union of uh, embodied spirit or individual life with the supreme spirit so uh, the resulting in a union of various degrees of completeness of the jivatma with the paramatma that is the point of yoga as well liberation can be attained by spiritual knowledge or atma gyana alone okay liberation can be attained by as uh, atma gyana alone though it is obvious that such knowledge must be preceded by and accompanied with and indeed can only be attained in the sense of actual realization by freedom from sin and right action through adherence to dharma as reading somewhere that atma gyana is uh, is also called panda or someone who knows how to get pan uh, atma gyana is uh, that action of you know, getting to uh, atma gyana is panda i guess and that's why that person is called pandit so the surnames pande and the odia surname panda all these are variations of someone who has uh, panda panda meaning uh, having atma gyana i guess the idealistic system of hinduism which posits which proposes the ultimate reality as being in the nature of mind rightly in such cases insists on what for default of a better term may be described as the intellectual as opposed to the ethical nature note uh, not that it fails to recognize the importance of the latter but uh, latter being uh, the uh, ethical not that it fails to recognize the importance of the ethical but regards it as, as subsidiary and powerless of itself to achieve that extinction of the modifications okay to achieve that extinction meaning the cessation the end of the modifications of the energy of consciousness which constitutes the supreme mukti known as kaivalya such extinction cannot be affected by conduct alone for such conduct whether good or evil produces karma which is the source of modifications which it is man's final aim to suppress the the idea of moksha is to not have those karmas and modifications moksha belongs belongs to the nivritti marga as the trivarga appertain to the pravritti marga there are various degrees of mukti some more perfect than the others and it is not as is generally supposed one state okay so now mukti is also not one state damn there are four future states of bliss or or uh, pada being in the nature of abodes vis-a-vis uh, salokya samipya sa- sarupya and sayuj sayujya that is living in the same loka or region with the deva worshipped that is salokya being near the deva samipya shomippo bengali receiving the same form or possessing the same aisarya uh, divine qualities of the uh, deva that is uh, sharuppo sarupya and becoming one with the deva worshipped sayujya eight um, i can't guess the bengali of this sayujya how is it pronounced never heard this word in bengali shoujo the abode to which the jiva attains depends upon the worshipper okay the abode to which the jiva attains depends upon the worshipper and the nature of his worship which may be with or without images or of the deva regarded as distinct from the worshipper and with attributes and so forth the four abodes are the result of action 
transitory and conditioned. Mahanirvana or Kaivalya, the real moksha, is a result of spiritual knowledge, jnana, and is condition unconditioned and permanent. Those who know the Brahman recognize that recognizing that the worlds resulting from action are imperfect, reject them and attain to the attain to that unconditioned bliss which transcends them all. Kaivalya is the supreme state of oneness without attributes, Nirguna, the state in which as the uh, Nirguna and Nirakara, I guess. Kaivalya is the supreme state of oneness without attributes, the state in which, as the Yoga Sutra states, modification of the energy of consciousness is extinct, and when it is established in its own real nature. Liberation is attainable while the body is yet living, in which case there exists a state of Jivan Mukti celebrated in the Jivan Mukti Gita of Dattatreya. The soul, it is true, is not really fettered. Okay, the soul, it is true, is not really fettered, meaning has chains, and any appearance to the contrary is illusory. Okay, so the soul is truly not fettered actually. But if you think that the soul is fettered, it is an illusion. There is in fact freedom. But through, but though moksha is already in possession, still because of the illusion that it is not yet attained, means must be taken to remove the illusion. Okay, interesting. This 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 idea is saying that uh, f freedom th though uh, freedom, uh, but though uh, thus in fact there is in fact freedom, but though moksha is already in possession, still because of the illusion that it is not yet attained, means must be taken to remove the illusion. And the jiva who succeeds in this is jivan mukta, though in the body, and in and is freed from the future embodiments. The enlightened caller will we will uh, delve into these topics much uh, in much detail when we discuss hi history of Indian philosophy as well. There are also great explanations and uh, detailed uh, citations have been given. We will get much more clarity from that book series as well. <sighs> though in the body and is freed from the future embodiments, the enlightened okay. Uh, so, there is in fact freedom, but though moksha is already in possession, still because of the illusion that it is not yet attained, means must be taken to remove the illusion, and the jiva who succeeds in this is jivan mukta, though in the body, and is freed from future embodiments. The enlightened caller, according to uh, Nityanita, sees no difference between the mud and sandal, friend and foe, a dwelling house and the cremation ground. He knows that the Brahman is all. That the, that the supreme soul paramatma and the individual soul jivatma are one and freed from all attachment he is jivan mukta or liberated the caller okay he is jivan mukta or liberated whilst yet living the means whereby mukti is attained the means whereby the mukti is attained is the yoga process which we just discussed uh, uh, about half an hour back what which you were you were asking that what is the point of kundalini yoga this the means whereby mukti is attained is the yoga process. Last chapter, one page, last page of the book, Siddhi. Let me check some comments before that. Shajusho, okay. What was the English word? Uh, Sayujya. That is Sajusho, I, I see. Shashujya, Sayujya, I see. No, I'll read the comments after I'm done with the last chapter. Last page, Siddhi. Siddhi is produced by sadhana. The former term Siddhi, uh, Siddhi is literal, uh, which literally means success, Siddhilab, includes accomplishment, achievement, success, and fruition of all kinds. A person may thus gain Siddhi in speech, Siddhi in mantra, etc. A person is Siddhi also who has perfected his spiritual development. The various powers attainable, namely Anima, Ahima, Ahima, Garima, Prapti, uh, prakamya, uh, uh, isitva, vastva, the powers of becoming small, great. Okay, let's uh, le let's read the translations then. The powers of becoming small, anima, the powers of becoming great, ahima, light, garima, uh, heavy, prapti, uh, prakamya, attaining what one wills and the like etc are known as the eight siddhis okay the 39th chapter of the brahma vaivarta puran mentions eight 18 kinds 18 kinds of siddhis but there are many others including such accomplishments 
um, such minor accomplishments as nakhadarpana uh, siddhi or nail gazing the great siddhi nakhadarpana siddhi is it like the bengali word uh, to have something on nakhadarpan meaning uh, you are very much a master of it the great siddhi is spiritual perfection even the mighty powers of the eight siddhis are known as the lesser siddhi since the greatest of all siddhis is full liberation maha nirvana from the bonds of phenomenal life liberation from the full liberation or maha nirvana from the bonds of phenomenal life and union with the paramatma which is the supreme object or paramartha okay now lower artha was wealth property money higher artha was meaning of life now there is paramartha which is the supreme object to be attained through human birth that is the end of this book pretty dense and advanced stuff thankfully we are going to read a, a lot of things in in parallel we are going to read aurobindo's sri aurobindo's uh life divine which is going to be insanely <laughs> tough to listen to and me having to explain all those english words and the uh, sentences and we will now start history of indian philosophy as well shakti and shakta and uh, we will end the brahma purana as well and i will do a bengali live stream from this channel as well on the rigveda bengali rigveda now let me check some comments i miss home it's been 4 years where are you yes gaudi and their theology had fifth uh, purusharth which they say is higher than the other four that is absolute bhakti to krishna like arjuna for males uh, like draupadi or a gopi by female we hindus have so so great delicate ideas i cannot but pity communist hindus who never look at hindu philosophy due to preconceived notion that scriptures have no value but superstition i was preaching profundity of sanskrit in my training group there comes this utterly confused commie to bully me and say geeta is superstition due to super power i do so he doesn't even know that religion is not the only thing written in sanskrit <laughs> i can't but pity him these anima mahima uh, are ashta siddhi said to be owned by hanuman hanuman chalisa says ashta siddhi uh, okay now the heart sign is there i can't read it uh, oh yeah uh, these anima mahima are ashta siddhi hanuman chalisa says ashta siddhi no uh, nidhi ke data i see oh even uh even in the uh, uh, uh kal bhairav ashtakam there is one line that ashta siddhi dayakam by the way go vi watch videos of ayon maharshi Ma ayon maharaj on the gita he does a fantastic reading of the gita for bindu i see i see interesting thank you good night then guys this was a great live stream a lot of concepts were clarified thank you for watching good night